We're back at it again today with another shotgun review. And I've been looking at a lot of the comments. I hear you. Some of you want to see cheaper shotguns, and today I'm finally getting to it. I have a very cheap pump shotgun. It is the Stevens 320. So today on Target Focus Life, we're going dirt cheap with the Stevens 320. Pull. Let's go. So we're gonna jump into the review in a minute, but I just wanna give you guys a quick heads up to make sure you check the description down below if you're interested in any of the products that I use and trust, whether it be eyes, ears, choke tubes, and many, many more cleaning products, all sorts of things like that, that's in the description. Also, we're still giving away stuff every single month. We're giving away a Reed's $100 gift card, and at the end of the year, we're giving away a of your choice. No, not the Stevens 320, a of your choice. So make sure you check the description for that. If you haven't entered yet, go ahead and enter. And even if you have entered, you can continue to share and get more entries into the giveaway. Check those things out. Let's get back to the review. Now the shotgun that I have here is the Stevens 320 Obsession Camo, which is not the baseline model. So I'm gonna compare it to the baseline model as we go through this review. This one is a little bit more expensive than the baseline, but even in this Obsession camo, the MSRP is $331. Now I was able to get this one at Reed's for less than that, but if we just look at their stripped down field model, which there's just some slight differences, 28 inch barrel field model, black synthetic, the MSRP is $280. So when we're looking at cheap, affordable, or as one viewer commented, poverty tier shotguns. This is right there, sub $300. In fact, I was able to go on Reed's website and I found a field security combo, which means it has a field barrel, 28 inches, and then it also has more of a personal defense shorter barrel. So two barrels, and it was still less than $300. It doesn't get really much cheaper than that. So today we're gonna be taking a look at it because cheap, isn't always good in my opinion. Now, I have never shot this gun, so I don't have an opinion yet. So as I walk through it, I'm gonna be shooting it, I'm gonna be testing it out, I'm gonna be giving you my feedback as I shoot it. Let's jump right into the review of the Stevens 320 with some quick specs. This is a 12 gauge shotgun. They also make options in 20 gauge as well. This one has a 22 inch barrel, way shorter than what I generally like, but this Obsession camo is made kind of more for that turkey hunting style. The weight of this shotgun is seven pounds, four ounces. And if you go up to that field model with the 28 inch barrel, it's over seven and a half pounds. So it's not a very light shotgun. Length of pull is 13 and a quarter inches. So it's a little bit short on the length of pull. And to my knowledge, I don't believe you can increase the length of pull or it doesn't at least come with any spacers to do that. So you would have to add an aftermarket pad or a Falcon Strike recoil reduction system pad, which is about the cost of this shotgun. <laughs> so maybe you wouldn't do that. If you go on Steven's website, they don't even have drop at comb and drop at heel measurements listed on their website because I'm guessing most people that are looking at a gun like this in this category really don't even care. They're just looking for a cheap gun that can shoot. And that's part of the question. How well does this gun shoot? How does it handle recoil? What quality is it really made of? And those are the things we're going to be taking a look at today to finish out the specs of this shotgun. We're going to take a look at the trigger, see what we're working with here. Let's just feel it out first. Oh, oh yeah. It feels just a little, little rough. It's not smooth at all but it doesn't feel overly heavy. It doesn't feel like a nice trigger pull, but it doesn't actually feel overly heavy. Let's pull out the Wheeler trigger scale. See what we're working with here. Any guesses? I'm gonna say just over six and a quarter pounds. Jordan, what do you say? Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. He has not pulled the trigger, but he's gonna put a guess in. Oh, seven pounds. 7.2 ounces, seven pounds, eight ounces. So we're right there. One more pull. Oh, seven pounds, five ounces. So if we look at the average trigger pull weight, seven pounds, 6.8 ounces. It's actually heavier than I thought. 
Um, but it's not super terrible. I mean, that's heavier than I would prefer. More so than just the weight is the feel of this trigger. It is a new gun. Maybe this will loosen up a little bit, but it's kind of what I would expect out of a sub $300 shotgun. All right, moving on into ergonomics of this gun. We're taking a look at the look, the feel, the function, how it feels in the hands. Right off the bat, it's not actually bad. I mean, it feels a little bit clunky. The edges aren't real smooth. It just, it doesn't form fit to the hands. The pistol grip, the angle is kind of steep here. I feel like it's cranking on my wrist. Not the most comfortable, but overall, not terrible. Like if I'm just going out to shoot a few clays, a few birds, a turkey, I'm really not gonna complain about it. What I would complain about is the length of pole. 13 and a quarter inches, way too short for me. One of the ways you can judge length of pole is when you mount the gun up, you should have one and a half to two and a half finger widths between your nose and your thumb. And if I get into this gun where it fits me, it's a little too short. My nose is probably gonna end up hitting my thumb. Part of that's because I have a long neck and I really get into my guns. Part of that's because I have a long nose and it really gets up into my thumb. So those things together, I need a little bit longer length of pull. The 320 has a cross bolt safety on the front side. You know my opinion on that. I prefer them on the back side, but pretty common on pump shotguns. Pretty common on a lot of guns that have cross bolt safety up there. Just a personal preference thing. I know a lot of you like it up front, so no big deal. Otherwise, I mean, it's a very basic gun. There is nothing really fancy about it. The recoil pad is actually nicer than what I thought. It's just a rubber pad, but a pretty decent recoil pad. We're gonna look at recoil in just a minute, see actually how well this recoil pad works. Drilled and tapped, did I mention that? It's drilled and tapped, so if you wanna put an optic on there for turkey hunting, which I love to hunt with optics, the field model, just the plain basic field model is not drilled and tapped. That's probably one of the reasons this gun is a little bit more money uh, in addition to it having camo. Overall, just feel on the hands, balance, very front heavy. A lot of semi-autos are balanced about right there. And if I were to just let go, you can see there's a lot of weight out front. Just kind of a heavier gun overall. The bolt release on this gun is on the opposite side of the trigger guard. So it is a little bit, if your hand's here, you gotta kind of rotate your hand around and push it to be able to operate the bolt. As far as operation, just smooth feel. It actually cycles pretty decently. I mean, not the smoothest pub shotgun that I've ever operated, but doesn't actually feel too bad. We're gonna put that to the test a little bit later as well. When it comes to ergonomics, look, feel, function, there's just not a lot to talk about. Uh, there's nothing fancy about this shotgun. Trigger guard is kind of small. The controls are pretty standard for a pump shotgun. This shotgun does have a fiber bead, which I could care less about, a vented rib, and it comes with one choke, one extra full choke. Like I said, this, is, this one's intended for turkey hunting. If you were to get the field model, I believe that comes with one modified choke. So just not a lot of options, not a lot of bells and whistles, just plain basic shotgun. But if budget's your number one priority, this might just fit the bill. Let's keep on moving. I wanna shoot this gun. I mean, I could talk about it. It's not that exciting to talk about. Let's get to shooting. I'm gonna take a look at recoil and reliability. Now, there's not gonna be a lot to test with reliability on this. It is a pump shotgun. Does it eject the shells? Does it cycle well? That's about all I'm gonna look at. But I know some of you watching have this shotgun. I would love to get your feedback. How is this gun operated for you? Have you had any issues in the field? Your feedback is tremendously valuable to all of us because when you share, we all get better. Let's just uh, get this chromatic trap set up here. Oh. The extra full choke took care of it nicely. It... What was that about? Didn't want to eject real nicely there. See how natural it is. Oh, I'm shooting it pretty good. I can definitely tell it's too small for me. I am just under six foot and this gun uh, would not be my preferred length of pull at all. 13 and three quarter inches. 
Oof. Felt that in my face. These are target loads. These are an ounce and an eighth. Nine shot. We are shooting a pump shot gun. Pump shotguns, if you didn't know, are gonna have more felt recoil than your semi-auto shotguns. So that's not uncommon. But definitely feel like I'm taking it up into my face. Recoil wise, I'm gonna say definitely got a little more recoil than I'd like for a light target load, but it doesn't feel terrible. The true test is gonna be when we get to speed shooting, seeing how fast I can run this shotgun, handle the recoil, get back on target. So stay tuned for that. But just with a few shots there, mounting this gun up feels a little unnatural. Ergonomics, I know we already touched on that, but I can really tell in my hands it, it doesn't feel great. But recoil was pretty moderate for target loads. I don't think I would wanna shoot a turkey load through this gun. That probably wouldn't feel... Um, I didn't ask you to grab these. Jordan thinks I should shoot a turkey round. Evidently he was uh, scheming this from before as he was getting set up. We got the federal third degree ounce and three quarter, 1,250 feet per second. That doesn't make any sense. It says two and three quarter and three inch shells. This is a three inch shell. It says right there, three inch. But look at, look at that. The shell is bigger than the Let's see what happens. So we got one of these here flying white flyer turkeys. Let's give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> I was nervous. Take two. Oh boy. Yep. Actually that was kind of straight back into my shoulder. I was surprised. I thought it was gonna take more to the face, which I absolutely hate. But yeah, I definitely felt that in the shoulder, but it felt better than I thought it would feel. Pretty impressed with how this little pump shotgun took the recoil. Recoil's different when you're shooting clays. Now, hey, I'm gonna only shoot one more. This stuff's expensive. I'm gonna try it stationary. Just mount it up, right? You aim at a turkey. I got my steel target out there I'll shoot at. Oh boy, yep. No more of that. We're done. That's got some punch. Luckily, when you're turkey hunting, you usually shoot one time and then you're celebrating and then you just got the enjoyment of harvesting a turkey, right? Except for when you got to sight it in. So make that process quick. Anyways, we're moving right along with the Stevens 320. Let's, uh, I, you know, usually I talk about quality of build. I, I don't think there's a lot to talk about here. And let's just break it down. I'll sort of talk about quality and show you how this gun breaks down and what we're working with here. It's pretty basic, you know, quality wise, it's a 300 some dollar shotgun. Not saying it's not gonna last. I think it definitely could last you a long time, but as you'll see here, as we take it down, it's just a goofy design. Trigger guard pops out and then we're able to take the pump, the slides, and the bolt all out. Be careful when you take it off because once you do, there's a spring attached to the firing pin. Once you take that off, that could fly out because what's holding it to in is this little metal piece right there, which the first time I took this apart, it was rather challenging to get back together until I understood how it went back together. Here's the bolt, here's the firing pin, it does have a rotating bolt head on it. Getting that firing pin back in is a little bit of a pain. Once it goes back in, we pick up the slides. This black U-shaped piece here has to go inside this U-groove on the bottom of the bolt. Kind of have to rotate it in. If you go straight in like this, it doesn't fit, but if you kind of rotate it and rock it in, there we go. Not too bad once you get the hang of it and know how things work, but yeah, a little bit goofy, not very intuitive. We'll slide this back on. I mean, I think for the most part, the construction is fairly solid. Um, you know, this gun's not gonna last as long as some of the higher dollar guns. I'm pretty confident in saying that, but 
unless you're shooting a ton, a ton of rounds, I don't think you're really gonna run into issues. This is another goofy piece as it comes together. These tabs on both sides of the trigger group need to slide underneath this plastic piece here. There we go. And then it just rotates in. Pin goes back in. Barrel back on. And we're back in business, baby. So there's just a quick look at the inside of the 320. See what we're working with. But it is now that time. Let's do some speed shooting. Putting this baby to the test. How fast can I shoot three clays? I have an extra full choke on, however, so today might be rather challenging. I'm gonna focus more on how this gun feels, how fast I can mount it, how well I can pull the trigger, all those things coming together. Enough talking, let's get to shooting. Oh man, oh man. Do you see how fast that was? <laughs> you might be like, yeah, but Steve, you didn't hit any of them. Well, that's true. The gun doesn't fit me and I'm shooting an extra full choke. But did you see how fast I was able to shoot that? Okay, so it's a 144, not lightning fast, but what we really wanna look at is from my first shot to my last shot. So it took me 0.85 to get on it, right? So if we look at it for three shots from the first to last shot, it's a 0.59. Let's see if I can get them though. Oh, what was that? The forearm is actually rubbing on the receiver right here, leaving this white mark. And if we look here, the forearm's touching here and we have a gap here. Guess I missed that in quality of build, huh? All right, I had to slow it down a little bit so I could smoke all three clays. Got it done with the 163. Not super fast, but took me uh, actually from first clay to last clay, 0.69 seconds. Three shots, 0.69 seconds. If you don't include the time it took me to throw and get on that first clay, which is 0.95. All things considered, with this shotgun, what are my thoughts? My thoughts are you're getting a gun around 300 bucks. You're gonna have to just accept certain things as not being fantastic. Uh, it's a heavier gun. The balance is kind of bad. The tolerances might not be the greatest. As I pointed out, this forearm is rubbing right here on the receiver. And I'm not sure that there'd be any way to really adjust that. I would have to break it apart and see, but I don't think we can really adjust that. Nothing seems to be loose. So I don't know if tolerances are great on this, but hey, you have 300 bucks. You want to get a shotgun, you don't currently own one. Would this be one to consider? Yeah, I absolutely think so. Now keep in mind, if you're not going to be turkey hunting, you don't need this gun. Uh, what this gun offers turkey hunters is it's drilled and tapped for an optic and it has an extra full choke. That's, and it's got a shorter barrel, right? 22 inch barrel. But if you're looking for that field model with that 28 inch barrel, if you just need a modified choke, well, what I'm going to recommend I'm gonna recommend no matter what you do with this gun, invest a little bit more money and get some Carlson's chokes or aftermarket chokes. Uh, I think that's gonna help improve things for you. If you only got the, the money to buy a, a gun in this price range, I think this is worth consideration. I'm gonna be doing some more reviews on cheaper pump shotguns. So keep an eye out for those. And then you can start to compare and say, hey, I only got 300 bucks, which one makes the most sense? Or maybe, you might watch these reviews and say, hey, Steve just did a review on this gun. It's a little bit more money, but it sounds like it's well worth it. That's kind of the point of these reviews. I have an opinion on guns, but I really just want to put out there what I'm observing, what I'm seeing, help you guys make an educated, informed decision when you purchase. And that's what it's all about. I thank you so much for watching. As always, remember, you're only going to hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.